Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, folks, the top five softest coaches in college football. <laughs> That's an interesting list. And also, Harbaugh has opted out as being honorary captain for the first game in the uh, Michigan Wolverine season. It's got to be America's team. We're going to talk about that. Uh, first, I didn't do a show yesterday. I was playing in a charity golf tournament. And actually, we wound up playing 27 holes. I had another little nine-hole event. So, I was too tired afterwards to do a video. I was unavoidably detained. <laughs> or I was unavoidably detained. <laughs> But anyway, I am back, and we're going to get all into this. We're going to talk about how Jim Harbaugh decided not to be the honorary captain for the opening game. It said uh, Sharon Moore, Michigan's new head coach, said Tuesday that Harbaugh had called him Monday to say that he will not be attending Michigan's uh, first game against Fresno State when the team will celebrate its national championship at Michigan Stadium. According to Moore, Harbaugh said he wanted to remain focused on his first Chargers team and not to take away from the 2024 Wolverine squad. Now, I'm not going to say that the, uh, the whole sign-stealing thing played a role in this, but I think that's exactly what played a role in this. He didn't want the whole distraction of being asked a ton of questions. He'd already said, I've spoken about this. I'm not going to say anything else. Peter, it doesn't work. I have spoken! Yeah, you remember the whole deal with I don't lie, I don't do that. Never lie. Never cheat, never steal. I was raised with that lesson. Yeah, and he knew he'd be inundated with questions, and he just didn't want any part of that. Plus, it just, I think he's trying to kind of walk away from all that negativity. Yeah, I mean, it's, they won a national title, but there's so much behind that, and that season was so, look, he got suspended twice, not even for the sign stealing. Well, part of it was sign stealing because the Big Ten hit him for three games over it. But the NCAA hasn't even hit the uh, team or him or anybody for that. But he's already got a four-year show cause and a one-year suspension over buying some cheeseburgers for some guys during the dead period and ignoring the rules. Mm hmm This is a tasty burger. And while I think that's an incredibly uh, harsh punishment for him, given the uh, rules that he broke, the fact that he completely disrespected the NCAA showed him, you know, pretty much – wasn't honest with them. I think they decided to make an example out of him, kind of like what they did with Bruce Pearl over the whole barbecue gate. And also, uh, Coach Moore, he uh, addressed his own involvement in the separate NCAA investigation in the sign-stealing operation where he uh, deleted a bunch of uh, text messages, like 52 of them from uh, Connor Stallions. It says, we know those uh, texts were recovered, which he later turned in. And he actually said, I look forward to them being released which I think is a good idea. If there's nothing in there that's you know, too incriminating, you might as well just put them out there and say, look, see, I just kind of panicked, which is obviously what he did. He heard all about the Connor Stallions thing. And now look, I'm not saying the coaches over there had direct knowledge of what Connor Stallions was doing, but it's really hard to ignore the fact that he was standing in the front of the uh, defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator and changing plays, it appeared to me, through uh, – through throwing his hands up and doing things like that about changing uh, plays, how could you not have a clue that something weird was going on there? Now, they may not have known the extent of what he was doing to get the signs, but they had to have some knowledge that he had signs. Otherwise, you don't know anything about college football. I mean, you've got a guy that's taken your defense out of its play and into another play. That's weird to me. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Weird. Or at least he was uh, signaling, hey, they're going to pass. That this, How would he know that? So anyway, this whole thing, it's going to blow up eventually when they finally come out with the uh, notice of allegations and all that about the sign stealing. Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, Connor Stains has got that uh, show on the 27th of this month, which will be on Netflix, uh, Sign Stealer. Sign Stealer guy. They named it that even though, of course, he couldn't have gotten those signs. <laughs> And one of the big problems for Moore is that he's uh, being accused of committing a level two violation. That was because of the text messages, et cetera. But it could be moved to a one because he would be a repeat violator because they had agreed to some other stuff earlier from, uh, from NCAA problems. So that could be an issue where he gets suspended. But again, we'll see how that plays out. I doubt that'll affect this season because normally the NCAA, as you know, goes very slow. I don't think they would have come out with all this stuff 
right now, if it wasn't for that special coming out on the 27th, they wanted to get ahead of that. And there, look, the NCAA can be very political. We all know that. So the fact they came out so early with this, instead of dragging it out for two or three years, kind of tells you that they, they were concerned about letting Connor Stallions have the narrative, which is probably pretty smart, honestly. Now, uh, this writer is going to rank the five softest head coaches in college football. This could be pretty interesting. Let's see what uh, he came up with. And some of this is probably pretty accurate. Some of it, mm, I don't know. But anyway, let's take a look at it. All right, he starts out with number five, Trent Dilfer, who's at UAB. Honestly, I don't care about this one. I don't follow UAB very much. Trent Dilfer, I don't really care. And I don't care. I'm going to tell you he... So, and I know y'all probably don't either. So we'll just skip this one and go to number four. All right, Ryan Day. This is controversial because the reason he's on the hot seat is that they've lost three years in a row to Michigan. Now, we know Connor Stallions had a lot to do with that because this is a team that had beaten Michigan 15 out of the last 16 years and the last eight. And some of those games were three and four touchdowns. But suddenly, when Connor Stallions showed up, they went from 69% to 92% winning percentage, and they started beating uh, Ohio State. Now, a lot of his problem is he got into a situation where he quit going for it on fourth down, things like that. Well, when another team knows your plays, it's kind of hard to make a fourth and one or a fourth and two work. And I think that got into his head because he was like, they keep stopping us. Did they stop him legitimately or did they stop him because they knew the plays? I, I don't know. That, that just seems a little bit unfair. But anyway, they've got him at number four. One other thing is he got into it, Lou Holtz, over some stuff. So I guess they feel like that's being, you know, a little bit sensitive. Sensitive. Number three is Dabo Sweeney. Now, Dabo at three, I could see that. He's a very good coach, by the way. I, I think Dabo's good at uh, running his organization. He Look, he's won two national titles, okay? So I'm not going to sit here and act like he's not a really good coach. But what's got him thrown off is that his fan base has not been happy with him. And you saw that whole situation where he got into it with a fan on a, a radio station and they went back and forth and it got kind of ugly. And he's pretty much told him, well, if you don't like the way I coach, you know, I can just leave. He kind of pulled a Nick Saban, but he's not Nick Saban. So that didn't go over so well in Clemson land. And the other big problem he's got is the transfer portal. And Sweeney said infamously that Clemson is too good to utilize the portal in an embarrassing attempt to deny the fact that athletes simply don't want to play for him. Ah, we'll see about that. It says the Tigers and Sweeney have gone downhill since the transfer portal became prominent and he simply isn't willing to admit that he's handled it poorly. I 100% agree with that. I think that has played a role. He refuses to use the portal. And he's another guy, he said, if we have to start paying players, he didn't want to be a coach or something along those lines. But anyway, he just he doesn't like change. He wants things to go back where he makes all the money, nine, ten million bucks a year, or eight, or whatever the crap he makes, and the kids don't get anything. I'm a grumpy old man. I don't like everything the way it is now compared to the way it used to be. I can understand him liking that. He's got total control, but that's not 2024. So you might as well get with the program, or you're going to struggle, or you need to retire. You know, he's not a dumbass. So he's got to figure this out, and he probably will over time. He just may have to suffer a little bit longer and then realize the portal's really important. Ask Lane Kiffin if it's important, or Ohio State for that matter. Number two, Lincoln Riley. I completely agree with this. Lincoln Riley is chicken. That's my opinion. He uh, ran off from Oklahoma because he didn't want to join the SEC, he didn't want any part of the, of the uh, Southeastern Conference. And I can understand that. It's very difficult. You know, he was out there in Oklahoma, pretty easy conference. They dominated. And he's an excellent offensive-minded coach. He always has a great quarterback. But him running away like that and creaking Oklahoma really stunk. Brave could often run away. No! Bravely ran away, away. I didn't. And then he tried to get out of the LSU game. An SEC team, he tried really hard to get out of playing LSU. And they got to play him this year. And he tried everything to avoid it. But, nope, you've got to play him. So that's going to be a real interesting game. And number one, it says he says, surprise, just kidding, Deion Sanders. If you watch Deion, especially recently, and, of course, this article just came out, Deion has really been angry with the media, and he's let it be known. You, you don't like us, man. Why do you do this to yourself? Come on. You, you don't, don't like us. Mark you likes me, by the way. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark said he likes me. No, so but that's you, one. you don't. 
Why do you it's do this, though? No, no, I'm sorry. You got to pay the bills. What did I do? Cut. You didn't do anything. It's not about that. But this but is a what, football why? question. I'm asking you why. Yeah, you can ask. But that, that's okay, not answer me. Because yeah. you want me to answer. You so Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's fair. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah, he just squares off with them about every time they uh, ask him questions, and he refuses to answer any questions if you've written an article that he doesn't like. Now, some of that was because he got ranked next to last as far as coaching in the Big 12. I think another part of it is there's been some stories out there about the culture at Colorado, and there was some other stories about possibly a son smacking uh, Cormani McClain, and I'm sure that angered him greatly because, you know, you don't want your kid taking grief, but, you know, it's a kid that's making a lot of money, and he's an adult now, and he's the uh, quarterback at Colorado, so he's going to take some grief. It's just kind of the way it is. But Dion's a dad, and he's highly sensitive. And he's been that way his whole life. I've showed you the video where back in the early 90s, when they went from worst to first as a baseball player, of course, great athlete. He's a great football player, great baseball player. He got uh, upset with a McCarver, who was uh, criticizing him a little bit, and he threw buckets of water on him. Tim McCarver confronted Sanders. McCarver's right here. Right now. You are a real man. You know that? (laughs) You are a real man, Dion. I'll say that. All right. So this is something that's not out of character for Dion Sanders. I will say one thing in uh, his defense. People are giving him grief about only winning four games last year. Look, and Colorado fans, you're not going to like this. I understand that. But y'all were 1-11. Okay, that is a dumpster fire by anybody's measure. You couldn't fill up your stadium at all. You had a lack of money, all of that. You hardly couldn't get a game on TV unless you were playing a great team. And now suddenly you're what everybody's talking about. So he quadrupled your win total. Your stadium sold out every home game. They're sold out this year. And you're on TV a lot. And everybody's talking about you. That's way better than being 111, okay, where nobody gives a crap about you and you're a cellar dweller which is hard for Colorado because there were years where they were great. Matter of fact, they shared in a national title back in, I think it was 2000. So anyway, they've got him as number one, softest. And it's hard to argue that on some level, but I also think he was a good hire for Colorado. So I'm kind of torn on that one a little bit. But anyway, those are your list. And uh, there's things I agree with, things I don't. But I thought that was a pretty interesting story that y'all might uh, enjoy hearing about. Anyway, if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's continue to cover all these big sports stories. If you've not subscribed, boom, 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 hit that little button. Won't cost you a dime. Helps me out and it'll help you get my videos. See, something in it for you too. <laughs> and right over here is the most recent video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. We'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.